Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Sunday, January the 30th, race number seven at Sam Houston. Let's throw up the field for the grade three Houston Ladies Classic. This race is for fillies and mares, $400,000 is the purse. You can download free formulator past performances on the race of the day event page at DRF. Com, access them, handicap along with us when you're finished making your selections. You can head on over to DRF Bets and play this nice Sam Houston card on Sunday. Mike, a lot of top horses recently have come out of the Houston Ladies Classic. No monsters this year, but some promising enough runners, including the three Pauline's Pearl and the seven, the Mary Rose, horses coming off lifetime buyer tops. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it didn't get a, a stellar field, that's for sure. But Pauline's Pearl um, does feel like, you know, a newly turned four-year-old who has a lot of potential. She's your morning line favorite. I think she's way the horse to beat in here. Um, to me, the key to the race is uh, the number seven, the Mary Rose, Dan. I don't know where that most recent start came from, um, but if she can repeat that effort, she's going to be very tough in here. Curious to see how Timeform US places the pace projector. There's not really a ton of gas in here. The Mary Rose does have some speed, and I would expect her to be forwardly placed from the outside. This is a potentially advantageous situation, Mike, if the Mary Rose can get to the front and back down the fractions in the form she's in. Uh, yeah, if she can make an easy lead in here and, and doesn't take any pressure, um, considering just that that last race um, all by itself, yeah, she, she's supposed to be really tough. You know, in defense of the favorite, though, even if this pace is a little bit moderate, I mean, she's not a slow horse, Pauline's Paul, and I do expect her to be right up close in a tracking position here. You and I remember the number one Velvet Crush when she was in New York earlier in her career. She'll now make her third start for the Michael Stidham Barn. Kind of an even performance last time out against stakes horses at the fairgrounds. Her tactical speed will play well in this race. She just needs to run a little faster. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I mean, she's run some OK races, but it does feel like she's going to need to do better than that in here. You know, her most recent start at Fairgrounds, I mean, maybe she didn't get a great trip in there, um, sort of looking up the rail in the upper stretch, couldn't really get through, had to alter course a little bit. I just wonder if she really had any run in that race. It, it, to me, it feels like even with a little bit of trouble there, I, I'm not sure it cost her all that much. Let's talk a little bit about the two, Audrey's Time, a horse that's won two out of her last three races. Both of those wins came on fast going, and the loss, you really can't falter for that. She was in a grade two against Anvutant, and she was just in a little bit too tough that day. This is a mare that, according to Timeform US, is going to need a little bit of pace help. I'm not sure about that. I think Corey Lannery can get her into the race sooner. She is kind of the wild card in here. Yeah, each of her last three races, she sat right up close. Um, so at this pace, you know, isn't that fast. I expect her to get a similar kind of a trip, just, you know, sort of rated in a three wide tracking trip last time. To me, she was clearly best that day um, and ran, you know, much better than Velvet Crush did. I don't know. We'll see, Dana. I felt like this was a situation where she did probably have to take another step forward. And, and maybe she can do that. Neil Pesson's got her in career best form right now. Your six to five morning line favorite is the number three, Pauline's Pearl. We have a formulator fact for trainer Steve Asmussen. Uh, Lasix off for Asmussen. Last out winners over the past eight months. He's four for seven with a 431 return on investment. Pauline's Pearl, a graded stakes winner last year. She competed in the Kentucky Oaks. I've always been a fan of hers. Where did that buyer speed figure come from last time? And in the Zia Park Oaks, it's kind of an outlier. But as you mentioned in the open, she's a well-bred lightly do, a lightly raced four-year-old with uh, some upside potential yeah i think all those things are true i mean yeah a, a new top in her final uh start as a three-year-old but listen she had run an 89 before that she ran an 89 as early as last april um when she won the fantasy at, at uh at the uh, oakland park so i don't think that that 96 necessarily came out of nowhere dan she just feels like she was a developing filly ran a really nice race the last time we saw her she's way the horse to beat in here
Becca's rocket goes turf to dirt, and she has been successful with that move in her career. We're going to watch her most recent start on dirt at Delta Downs two races ago. This was the treasure chest at Delta on November the 12th, and she's going to finish second, beaten a length. There was a good amount of pace for her to run at in this race, Mike, and she is going to get up for second. Um, I wonder if she's a little bit class compromised. Her buyer speed figures are somewhat light. She does move up on a wet track. Yeah, we'll see if she can take the step forward here um, in her four-year-old debut because she's certainly going to have to. They really just kept her to allowance company for the most part last year. They took one shot in that Rachel Alexandra early last year. She was no match for those horses. Um, just in a situation there, Dan, where she has to really improve. But as you see from the formulator fact, this barn has done well turf to dirt over the past year or so. 21% winners and a $3.29 return on investment. Champagne Affair is up next. This horse has not raced since September in an allowance race and was just handled by Becca's Rocket that day. Uh, this is a tough ask. Yeah, it just doesn't really look that competitive on paper, but she'll be a big price. Similar situation with the six golden curl, a horse moving from synthetic to dirt. This horse was on a kind of moderate pace last time out against stakes horses at Turfway on the poly track, faltered in the stretch. The third finisher did come back to run second in another Turfway stake with a 77 buyer. She's got to prove it to me on dirt. I'm not sure that speed on poly track translates to dirt. Yeah, I don't think it does either. And, and again, you know, it's not like, you know, even if this pace is slow, it, it feels like two of the favorites are going to be right up there anyway. So it's not an advantage for her to have early speed in this race. You know, they've concentrated mostly on other surfaces the last couple of years. Um, to me, her dirt races just don't make her competitive. Completing the field is the Arkansas bred, the number seven, the Mary Rose. We'll watch her most recent start. She's another John Ortiz train runner that came up and popped a big buyer speed figure out of nowhere at Oaklawn this meet. The Mary Rose earlier in her career was a decent sprinter against state breads. She's gotten good stretching out in distance. And in this race, she got a pretty nice trip up close to a moderate pace, but she drubs them in the stretch. Uh, yeah, this is just really impressive. I mean, they just kept her three wide. She cruised uh, up around uh, to contention around the second turn there and just buried that field through the stretch. Again, I don't know where that race came from. Um, she had never run anything even close to a, a race like that prior in her career. If, she, if that's what she is now, Dan, um, she's going to be really tough in here. In some ways, I kind of want to make, I want to see her do it again, especially because she's going to be a short price in here, but she was impressive last time. Well, let's take a look at our top pick for the grade three Houston ladies classic, Pauline's Pearl. I agree with you, Mike. I think there's a lot of upside potential here. I don't think she has to be at the mercy of the pace. Uh, I can see a situation in this race where they're kind of just bunched up and it turns into a sprint for home. And I think her kick might be good enough. Yeah, I think so too. I, I just overall, I just feel like she's the best horse in the race. Um, there's, you know, you have the layoff, I guess, to, to concern yourself with a little bit. Um, I'm not really that worried about that. Um, I just feel like unless the Mary Rose can repeat that last effort, I think this is a great spot for Pauline's Pearl. We're going to go with Pauline's Pearl, the number three for trainer Steve Asmussen in the Sunday race of the day, the grade three Houston Ladies Classic. Best of luck.